Oh, also, I've uh, <coughs> started this new thing on Sunday. It's called Sushi Sunday. Really? Yeah, I just love sushi, so it's most of my excuse to eat it all the time. No, I've no, never tried it. Oh. I can't, uh, I can't picture myself liking it. Uh, I would have I would have never thought I'd like sushi, but I, I fucking love it. Uh, actually, just quickie review. We'll, we'll, we'll throw in a little quickie review with this. Go for it. Um, it's not, we're not going to shy on for ages about it, but Gravity was outstanding. Awesome. Yeah, one of the most intense movie experiences of my life. Yeah, at one point, I think, at some point, less than halfway through the film, I suddenly realised, I was like this, and I think I'd been like that for about five or ten minutes. Literally, I didn't know I was doing it. I don't know. I don't know what reminded me. I think I went to put some popcorn in my mouth and went to open my mouth and realized my mouth was already open. <laughs> literally, literally, no joking. And also, uh, the last ten or fifteen minutes of the of the film. Yeah. It was like my heart was racing. The thing that made me have that kind of reaction was when the debris. Uh, and this isn't a spoiler because it is in the trailer when the yeah, debris yeah. hits the, the thing at the start. And, She's spinning off into space. Yeah, that terrified me. That was so terrifying for me because yeah. when you think about the context of what was happening to that woman, yeah. she was dead. She, do you know what I mean? Like she was. Once you start flying off into space, you, you can't stop you're, yourself from spinning. You're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah, you're dead, and it's gonna take a long time to die. Yeah, I think that's part but, of the reason why the film was worked so well for me. Um, it's it's not just the music. The music was good, and the special yeah. effects. All of that stuff was good, but the acting. It comes down to the act at the end of the day, and I think Bullock, she smashed it. Do you know what I mean? She really, she really sold it. You really felt for her. Even though yeah. what was great about it was she actually came across as a fairly cold character at the start yes. of the film, cold-hearted and, and all business and what have you. Um, and then you find out <coughs> she has a bit of a, the, the, a bit of a trauma in her personal history and what have you. Um, and it's not as if they use that trauma to get you to like her. You just grew to like her naturally anyway. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you sympathise with her play. You really you, you felt like you were in her shoes. You were living it through her. I found myself willing her to, to survive. Exactly, uh, yeah. Sitting in the chair going, oh, come on, please, please do this because I want you to live. Yeah. And I just thought the storyline was brilliant. She, she is brilliant in it, but just uh, it reminded me as well, uh, Clooney. It's, yeah. It's got to be his best role. It's the role Definitely. he was made for. He's, he's this suave, typical suave, <coughs> hot dog, ast- astronaut type guy. Kind of, it's it's all about how cool he is, and of course you're thinking cool, you're thinking George Clooney, but also there was another side to him as well. Yes, a, a, yeah. a caring side. Maybe he wasn't all about the suaveness and the jokes. There was also yeah. there's other angle to his, his character as well, which normally you don't get with him. It's normally yeah. just look at me, I'm so fucking suave with me hair. It's it's definitely Oscar fodder, as in you could tell it's one of those movies that people will really be like. Hey. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. You know what's going to do well at the Oscars, but yeah, in every this season. time, it's deserved. Like Things like Avatar and The Artist. Yeah. And like, no. the, really, The Artist, that didn't deserve an Oscar. It's a fucking two-hour silent film of shit. I'm sorry, I did not like The Artist at all. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I'd like to see it, just because it's so unusual, um, but I didn't yeah, see it. It's, it's not as good as everyone made it out to be. The best yeah. thing about it is the dog, I thought. <coughs> I just I don't think it deserved the praise it got. No. But this film definitely does deserve any awards it wins, yeah. and then so, and I I think they should create a new category and give an award to Sandra Bullock's arse. Amazing! My God, the woman is yeah. uh, the performance her arse gave was was beautiful. It was yeah. heart wrenching. It was well rounded character. I really yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was on the edge of my seat and horse. There was one bit, uh, I just thought it was slightly on the nose, where she gets into one of these capsules and she's, she gets stripped, and I thought that was a throwback to uh, Barbarella. Have you ever seen Barbarella? Nope. Ah, oh, bollocks. Okay, for all the older viewers, Sandra Bullock gets out of her spacesuit, and I just thought it was a throwback to Barbarella, which was slightly on the nose. But while she's floating about, catching her breath for the first time in about 20 minutes, She's floating, and you're, she's kind of in the fetal position, and there's also a cord, there's some sort of a cable floating in front of her, and it was like, straight away I was like, fetus, we're definitely supposed to think fetus here, the the warmth yes. of the womb, um, which was grand, which was grand, but it went on for another couple of minutes, and I was like, I get it, I get it, it's a fucking fetus in a womb, you don't need to hammer it home so much. That's That was the, literally the only problem we have with the whole film, and it, you know, when you think about it, is it really that big of a problem? It's not. No, but in the context of 
the movie, to not spoil this movie at all, because yeah. everyone, I think, should definitely go and see this really? movie. Yeah. In the context of her character, I think the way why they did that was very important. I think it was supposed to show that this is the, she was in an environment where we're not supposed to be. Now, I'm not saying I don't... I mean, space exploration is probably one of the most important things we can do, but yep. naturally, na- in nature, we're not supposed to be up there. And uh, her getting back into a semi-Earth-like environment was almost like her going back into a natural thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, and it was the first chance she'd had to basically relax in yeah. like an hour or something at this point. Also, um, she was, like, I mean, it, was, it was still, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, as much as I'm complaining about it being on the nose, it was still a beautiful scene. And yeah. it's, it still belongs in the film, the whole fact of getting into this thing and getting stripped and just catching the fucking breath. So I, I, I actually want to take back any criticism of that scene. You know, every now and again a movie comes along where you cannot find any fault with it. It's just perfect. Yeah. And in fact, I could be wrong. Like, what's Alfonso Coran, is that his name? Yeah, something like that. If he's watching this right now, he's probably saying to himself, oh yeah, she kind of does look like a fetus. Never thought of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I could be putting words in his mouth. Yeah. He's probably going, fuck, that would have been a great idea. Yeah, I should have emphasized it more. Yeah. Maybe if we could hear a harpy. <laughs> Uh, That's no. gonna be on the Blu-ray. Yes, yeah. He's gonna digitally enhance it. And he won't fucking thank me. Well, he might now. He might. Come on, Fonzie. Uh, when that scene comes up, there's just gonna be a little annotation in the corner. Bottom right of the screen, it's just gonna be you like that. Fetus. Mm. Here's a question for you. Uh, Iron Man 3. Am I right in saying there was like a different version of that shown in China? <laughs> yes, there was. They had, they had like a load of extra scenes. Uh, not a load. There was... I, I've watched both. There was about... Yes, a uh, cut of the film produced for release exclusively in China includes additional scenes featuring Wang. Uh, There's never uh, those scenes featuring Wang. Yeah, and an appearance by Fan Bingbing as one of his assistants. So Bingbing is Wang's assistant. Obviously. And Bingbing is fucking amazing looking, Jesus Christ. Hell oh, yeah. Uh, did, have you seen the latest Wolverine movie? No, I have it, uh, and I'm going to sit down and probably watch it after this. Right, but, uh, go ahead, me. sorry. Go, no, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll say nothing. I'll say nothing. Get back to me. Is this the yellow suit? Wolverine. Yellow suit. Did you not hear about this? Are you an X-Men fan? <sighs> okay. As in, do I, I know what Wolverine looked like in the comics? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've always... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a comic nerd. So, I mean, I've always... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like a... What's the word? I'm like a, a passive nerd. Like, other people around me would have been nerds. I, w- I would have got second-hand <laughs> absorption of some of the information, you know? Yeah. I've always been a huge fan of the comics, and I've always been a fan of the, uh, the 1990s cartoon that came out. I, when I first saw the original X-Men movie, as a kid, because I was a kid when it came out, I didn't know... You know, right now you always you know, research movies and you see all these images as soon as they come out. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the movie until I was going to see it, basically. I was very disappointed that Wolverine wasn't wearing his yellow costume. Now, yeah. what they've done at the end of the Wolverine, the second movie, is they have a deleted scene where they show him opening a box in which is the yellow suit. So, are they basically saying, hinting that... He, is he going to be wearing this suit in the next X-Men? I don't know. And that's, also, what's, what, 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 what's the context of that scene? Where does he get that suit? Uh, off some bird... I don't know. I tried to avoid reading as much, but I, I just look... No, you haven't seen the film, so... Yeah. Yeah. He okay. gets off some chick on a plane. But um, people are saying that maybe he'll wear it in the next X-Men movie, you know, the Days of Future Past. Yeah. So I'm really hoping he does. I think that'd be really awesome. But oh, from the class, trailer that yeah. they've released so far, it doesn't look like... I, I'm assuming Kev's not coming online at this point. If he messages me, I will let you know. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do this again tonight. Uh, but I will be around tomorrow for a little while. Yeah, I think tomorrow's probably awkward for me. Whenever. I mean, I'm I'm easy like a Sunday morning, do you know what I mean? So, as uh, that lad who sang that song would say. So, I don't know who sings it. Is it Lionel Richie? I don't. I wouldn't have said so. I wouldn't have said so. Are you going to check it out? I really don't care that much. I care, I care now. <laughs> easy like a Sunday morning. Fuck me, Lionel Richie. Smoothest yeah. fucking silk voice on that man. I never, I never would have thought. He's got some good uh, songs. He has. Yeah, yeah. Dance on the ceiling. Hello. Is a meal. Oh, classic. Classic. And my own personal favourite, which I can't fucking remember the name of it. <laughs> 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 Not like I knew the name, but then as soon as I said hello, is a meal. Looking for the, the name just 
He's like, fuck you, I'm out here. Uh, all Night Long. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a fucking tune. So if you want to fade out with that song for this video, that would be amazing. May as well. Oh, no. Who's going to stop me? Probably the copyright people. <laughs>